Hello there, it's me, RJB. And today we have ourselves a replay between Maul and Rabbit. It's a turn against Zerk. Rabbit is here under the name Yang Shiki Sun Yun, and he's playing the green Terran. Maul is here on the bottom corner of the map as the yellow Zerk. Now, there's some people sleeping in my house. And I wanted to cast a match nonetheless, so I'm going to bring this match to you in the most relaxed manner I can muster. Because of course, some hype has to be there, but I'm going to tone it down a little bit and make sure you can sit back, roll up a joint or grab a cigar, and just relax. Maybe grab a glass of whiskey, some scotch glass of wine, maybe some beer, because this is going to be a very calming experience. Now it looks like Maul is not going for the choke build order there as the Zerg. Instead he starts off with two hatcheries right there at the start, followed up by that pool right next to it and another hatchery there. Actually three hatcheries into a pool, even riskier than going for only two hatcheries into a pool, into a hatchery. He goes with three hatcheries right from the start and a single sunken colony there in the front. Now Rabbit already has Marines moving over the map to try and deal some damage here because that pool is finishing up very late. Sunken is now on the way. Some Zerglings are going to be queued up as well but I don't see them just yet. So these Marines are there and they might cancel this sudden colony just in time, although it's finishing up right here about now. Drones getting a surround on those Marines. SV there also in danger of going down, and looks like Mong, at the expense of losing a couple of drones, does fight off that attempt there from Rabbit to get some damage down on his opponent, but it is not to be, not today. So to compensate for losing some of his drones that were on the minerals, Mong pulls some drones off of his gas and puts them on the minerals now after those have spawned he puts the back on the gas and well he needs that gas later on because he's probably going for lurkers or for a mutilisk build order he's got Lair there, there on the way marines are already bottling up here in the front for a rabbit as more marines are there on the way he's got that fc there in the back he might build a well he's gonna build a bunker there i thought he might start with a factory but he's going for marines all in because he might be needing a lot of marines there and if he doesn't get a lot of marines he might be caught off guard with his pants down by a mass hydralisk or a mass lurker or even some mulesks so he finds himself a nice little corner here in the bottom where he can attack those hatcheries without those hatcheries being protected by those sunkens. Although that sunken there on the top has just finished up and it is killing marines here on the bottom corner. Although it looks like those marines here are still safe and outside of the range of that sunken. So they will, of course, keep dealing damage. He's a little bit late with his high level them because the lair is already finished up so he can't get that instant lurker upgrade but those zerglings will do the trick observing speed there on the way so those marines are cut out and will get taken down a couple of them do make it out there though he's got more marines and medics there on the way to reinforce and there's a factory there being built there on the middle behind the bunker hoping it will keep that factory safe but Zerg is here on the map are already running around trying to kill stuff and he's sneaking out right behind the marines that just entered his base so he's going to kill that bunker there and stop the factory from happening there as well as he's attacking that SCV SV there it goes down factory still up there it is going to get cancelled there though because Rabbit knows he can't keep it alive this game is starting to look pretty good here for Maul. Marines at the bottom are still going to try to take down that hatchery, but Zerglings here are catching more Marines out. They were still rallied into the middle of the map. So now we're in a situation where Rabbit does not have a lot of units here back at home. He's got no fire bats in the mix are on the way. He's still making all the Marines. The medics there are retreating. Got those. Yeah, I think those Zerglings have overreached by a tiny bit because now the medics are going to keep healing up those Marines and those Zerglings go down. Also, Marines here on the bottom side of the map are failing to kill those marines because the marines have three medics up down there to heal them and it looks like that hatchery in the end does go down so he does have lurk aspect on the way but he's got no hydras finished out yet the hydras are on the way there those got a circ queen's nest there on the way as well and aspire range upgrade is just finished for rabbit so he can kill that spire just out of range of that sunken although the marines are bugging at the moment because he Press the hold position, there's some pretty bad coding going on where they can't attack if you put hold position on marines at certain times in the game. But he takes down the spire, 
so we won't be seeing mule discs anytime soon he's gonna have to build a new one which at the moment he can't really afford because he has to invest into those lurkers now the fact that rabbit went for four barracks and a very late factory because the one in the middle cancelled he doesn't have a starport at the moment yet he does have a starport on the way somewhere i think right there marines are hunting the lurkers lurkers are trying to get a good Burrow on those Marines, but Marines there simply make their way out and they're gonna retreat back to the middle of the map Though I think at the moment he's still trying to contest and get a foothold in this area He's gonna to try to buy as much time as he can By slowly dancing backwards as Mong is slowly progressing forwards Just buying as much time as he can preventing Mong from progressing Pretty much at all though those who gets the scan finished up he gets scanned on those lurkers First gonna go down to the Marines Marines there getting out victorious, but now he doesn't have detection for those other Lurkers there, so now Mon can move those lurkers into position to keep those marines away. He goes in with the marine stims in, he finds a nice little corner there where there's nothing protecting the main, but the lurkers arrive eventually just in time. And those marines get zoned away, he's cutting off the supply line there with that lurker, but those marines are getting caught out there, it's gonna have to ret retreat. More lurkers still on the hunt. So he's doing a pretty good job there of keeping Toki away and preventing Toki from dealing damage to his base. He did these damage there, he took down a single sunken that was right there and he took down that hatch there on the bottom as well. So he did do some damage, but Mong is going pretty strong. Scan energy, second scan is on the way, first scan is almost finished up there in the back. He does have two starports now and he's got a science facility there on the way as well, so he will have vessels soon too. But for now, Rabbit is stuck here in the front. He's going to stim down those lurkers there in the front. And he opens himself up a path deeper into Monk's baby. Monk already finished four more lurkers. Uh, Rabbit at the moment can't fight through. He does try to. He throws down a scan, but there's too many lurkers that are stacked on top of each other for him to go into. The Filer Mount has finished up. New Spire is on the way. Lurkers are going to try to box those Marines into that corner and prevent them from being useful. Which is actually a pretty good choice here because there's not many marines here on the top side to kill those lurkers. So he's getting a pretty good surround there on the marines. Marines are now stuck in between a uh, rock and a hard place to take down one lurker so they will stay alive. But the lurkers are still going to progress closer and closer and box them into the little corner where they are at the moment still somewhat safe. But they can't really do all that much. Three factories there, two starports, he got two vessels on the way, he's got radiate on the way as well, so he's gonna be hunting for some drones or maybe for those defilers because he's gonna need to kill those defilers to prevent the lurkers from happening. Although those marines are trying to get out of this nasty situation, but they're getting caught by all those lurkers nonetheless. Then all the marines do go down, the gonna go down there as well. And yeah, pretty much nothing achieved there from Ma from Rabbit. Although he is almost double the worker count he is exactly double the worker count of mong so he is doing quite well but do not underestimate what mong can do because he now has the tech and surf does not leave that many minerals to get the of this rolling so the lurkers roll up and set up shop there next to the tanks and the tanks are going to be forced to unseat and retreat lead frogging away from the danger as those lurkers solidify and defend the entrance here for Mong. So Mong's doing a pretty great job there of keeping up and progressing deeper. Oh, that lurker might there go. No, the lurker stays alive. It's going to burrow up right next to the tanks. And those tanks in the top corner are going to go down if they don't get away there quick. Rabbit is just going to let them die. He's going to focus on something else. But he knows that those units there on the top corner are toast. And once again, another progression there on top of the remaining tanks there inside of his choke point. Gets the Lurkus Burrow up right next to it. Dark Swarm comes out on top. The fighter goes down in the end though. But he gets done what he wanted to do. And that is set up shop there in the front to keep Toki out. Let's look at what Toki's doing there in his base. He's got drops. No drops on the way. Mostly just vessels. He's building more starports. He's still got uh, two more factories on the way. He's not really going to commit to any more barrack units because those aren't that useful against lurkers or guardians or any of the other options that uh, mom has at the moment so toki is just gonna set up sh um, set up a good tech switch and progression to get a lot of mech a lot of air and try to get the well the upper hand over mom who's at the moment forced to defend with that lurker swan there in the front to prevent and uh, toki from getting in toki from pressuring him and to buy himself time to grow bigger and bigger. He's got seven hatcheries for macro up and running. He's got all the tech he needs, although he might need some upgrades there because he only has a single evil chamber. He does have carapace on the way though for his ground forces, which is a really strong upgrade. Level two is on the way actually. Level one already finished. 
Although it has scorches ready to kill vessels, Rabbit is setting up shop there on the sides, building turrets to set up a contain and to get information from everything that leaves Mong's base. So the game is progressing quite well, and we're in that very short stalemate period where Rabbit can't advance despite having more supply, despite being richer and having more workers. Mong's tech choices here are doing a great job of keeping Toki out. Uh, if more factories have finished, vessels are finishing up as well. It's gonna go for a lot of vessel run bys there with the razor move. Armies are finishing up for upgrades, factories coming in for tanks, and possibly Goliaths in the case that Mong is gonna switch over to Guardians. But Mong has to fill out his drone count quick and fill out his base quick. Get more gas there on the top as well, because at the moment he's only running on five. Uh, extractors which will not sate his gas needs. He's going to need a couple more. He's going to need a couple more. He's going to need some couple more uh, hatcheries probably as well because he won't be able to keep up with his opponent's macro if he only has seven macro hatcheries while facing seven starports and I think soon to be 16 factories as well. So that's going to be in favor of Toki, who's doing a great job there, progressing his macro, his base size, and his ability to produce units. Whereas Mong is simply buying himself time to hold the front. He's holding the door as instructed, but it might come at a heavy price. Hold the door, they said, and hold the door he did. Press F for your respects. So he's got overlords here on the side, he's gonna have to pull back to his base because they're being in danger of getting killed by Valkyries, which are hunting and clearing out the sides for any signs of life. Vessels coming in there though from the top side, but they get intercepted by Vessel, but he gets the defensive matrix down on one of the vessels, and the vessel still has energy for irradiate. He radiates some drones, there's no burrow. There is burrow. But it looks like 40 drones, no, 30 drones do go down there for Mong because he doesn't burrow all of his drones in time and it's a pretty darn strong hit there, pretty bad for Mong, pretty good for Toki because now Toki can simply amp up the pressure whereas Mong will be incapable of having enough macro going because he simply can no longer afford to make units, he has to make drones first and then wait about 30 seconds for his economy or the level of income to recover back to what it used to be. So it's gonna be a very slow game of encroachment and the encroachment already starting here because Mong is a little bit late with getting a new Dark Swarm up there in the front. Valkyrie's clearing out Scorches, Tank cleared out a couple of those workers and another mass vessel Radiate coming in from the top side there. Now do know you added on two spores there to help intercept those vessels, but that's a lot of vessels. I count seven of them and he's gonna radiate every single one of them in rapid succession and just fly in and there's no way Mong can kill all of them vessels in time he's trying his hardest though but a couple of those vessels aren't gonna make their way in Mong is burrowing up his drones and down a bunch of drones go he burrowed up most of the drones there on the minerals but he does get I think about 20 drone kills which is pretty significant so yeah, it's just going to be abuse and abuse, and Mong is finding himself in a very dangerous position. Now imagine if Mong had not lost those drones at all, and those vessels had died or not. Well, not killed drones, basically. If he had burrowed them all up just in time, he would have been able to go for the counterattack right here, right now, because he has enough hatcheries, in my opinion. He's got enough of the fighters, enough lurkers, to go for a push. But all he needs to do is secure his life, secure safety. At the moment it looks pretty hard to do because Toki managed to sneak through some units and he's gonna kill those spores here on the bottom side so you can fly in vessels from this other corner as well not just from the top but also from the bottom corner so that's looking pretty good there for Toki although those units are now gonna sacrifice their lives while only taking down a single spore but at least it annoys and damages Maul a tiny bit which is completely worth it because Toki was simply opening up supply space and he simply wanted to get the most out of opening up his supply space to also deal some damage. Vessels are in the front though and he's gonna go for another eraser move there. He's radiating all of his vessels and in he goes. Will 
Mong be able to hold this, he throws down a plague, he's target firing the vessels, but one vessel makes it and arrives on the scene, drones are burning up, but the drone, ooh, the vessel goes down there, no drone goes down, so Mong is still looking pretty good, but he's losing control over the front. Two tanks there managed to pass through that, well, that front door he had, so holding the door is no longer working. So he's gonna have to get inventive and creative here because he's going to need more lurkers to hold the front there but he cannot make a lot of them because he is short on supply. And he's mostly fighting with his own drones, he's trying to get control over his economy. Once again, lurkers have finished up there in the back, lurkers in the front have gone down because he didn't throw down a radiate and he's now trying to push out and get new lurkers up there in the front. The hydras are there to tank tank fire, gets lurkers burrowed up there and burrows those lurkers under the dark swarm. And once again, the front there is secured, but look, this looks to be about 12. Well, it's more than 12. It looks to be 13 vessels here in the front. That gives him a lot of radiating ability on those drones and pretty much radiate everything he sees. He can decide to radiate over the fighters and prevent future uh, swarms from coming down to protect the lurkers. He can even radiate the lurkers, which it looks like he did. He radiated the lurkers there under the dark swarm with his vessels and because he has so many vessels he can afford to do it. Tanks are getting through there though but the tanks are going to go down but now it's going to go for the drones there in the back. Vessels are really simply radiating on the drones instead of radiating the vessels and he doesn't get that many drone kills but those vessels can simply stay there in the back, keep radiating individual drones and get some drone kills but mostly force those drones to remain burrowed while he's going to progress here in the front at the same time as well. Vessels in the bottom corner are still alive there, tanks in the front are pushing, more vessels are joining the back there, but vessels are going down to the higher list, but he gets a reading of all the drones. Drones don't get burrowed, but it only kills 4 drones, so that's completely fine for Mong, but Mong now pushing on the pushback, but he's got no workers to burn up under the dark swarm, so the pushback will not be that significant, because those tanks in the back are going to kill those higher list under the dark swarm, but he does clear out the tanks there in the front. Looking pretty good there. Oh, he calls the GG because he lost his entire mass. He has no lurkers left. He's got no defiers left either. So he knows that the game is over. And Toki wins that one pretty convincingly. Mong had never really, never really got the chance to break out. And that's pretty much what happens if you lose your drones over one little mistake and you don't get a chance to lash out back at your opponent. You stay too small, your opponent becomes too big. And this shows the world, it shows everyone how hard it is to play Zerg versus Terran. Because if one thing goes wrong, the Terran simply becomes too strong. Because their economy and their macro ability scales up linearly. Where the progression of getting drones per 14 seconds, well, SCVs per 14 seconds, stays consistent. So your economy also consistently increases while you're both an army. Whereas the Zerg has to very slowly progress. That was a pretty interesting game. I hope the cast wasn't too boring with my relaxed voice because I didn't really go into hype mode at any moment or any time in the game. I just wanted to stay calm, relaxing, so you could enjoy that blunt, get high, drink that beer, that whiskey, whatever you're drinking. Maybe it's just chocolate milk. But anything you're drinking is completely fine. So that's me, RJB. Hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you back around next time when you want that, well, to save that craving for some StarCraft fastest map remastered, one versus one gameplay, that I'll be bringing you for the rest, remainder of the week.